Situated in the heart of the ancient North Cork barony of Duhallo lies the town of Canturk. Today a busy market town. In the late 16th century, it formed part of the lands owned by the powerful McDonough McCarthy clan. There, they would build their castle. Canturk Castle, or the Old Court as it is known locally, is an impressive example of Irish architecture in the post-Elizabethan era. This building, with its fine doorways and fireplaces, stands in stark contrast to the brutal age in which it was constructed. Ireland in the 1500s was indeed a lawless and violent place to live. Control over the province of Munster was split between the powerful Norman Fitzgerald dynasty, the Earls of Desmond and the Gaelic McCarthy Moor clan, who ruled much of West Cork and South Kerry. A series of disastrous insurrections against the encroaching English in the late 1600s shattered the control of the Fitzgeralds and left much of Munster in ruin. Despite the upheaval taking place around him, Dermot, son of Owen, now the leader of the McDonough McCarthy clan, a sub-clan of the McCarthy Moors, was able to retain control over his lands in Duhallow. Imprisoned by the English during the Nine Years' War and released after the defeat at the Battle of Kinsale, he sought to demonstrate his loyalty to the crown by swapping his Gaelic title for an English one in 1614. The Lord of Duhallow was now secure enough to build his castle. Some have sought to classify the old court as a fortified house rather than an actual castle on account of its more refined features. While the difference between the two may be somewhat academic, the building has a number of defensive features which would have certainly deterred any would-be attackers. The gun loops, which would have been manned by musketeers, all commanded good fields of fire that would have made any approach on the castle difficult. The structure was by no means impregnable, but was not unknown even for fortified houses to stop medieval armies in their tracks and so were often bypassed if not the main objective. Since no documentation from the period survives today, much of the old court's early history remains shrouded in mystery. Even the date of the castle's construction is uncertain, with some speculating that building work began in the 1620s or 1630s. As is usual, when evidence is in short supply, myth and legend move in to fill the void. Dermot, the castle's alleged builder, was rumoured to have been a brutal tyrant. Unsuspecting travellers were plucked from the road and forced to work on the site until they died from exhaustion. Their blood being used to bind the mortar that holds the very stones of the castle together. The most famous story of all, however, concerns that of its roof. The legend goes that Dermot, in a flurry of extravagance, ordered the roof of the castle to be built with blue glass tiles. The English settlers, who had been planted on the adjoining lands of the former Earls of Desmond, protested to the Crown that the castle was too large and formidable for a mere native like Dermot to possess. The authorities ordered that work on the castle be stopped. Dermot, in a fit of rage, threw the blue glass tiles into a nearby river knowing that his castle would never be completed. Whatever the truth of these stories, the most likely explanation for the castle's demise is much more mundane. Dermot and his son Dermot Og simply ran out of money. Here, at Knockbrack, outside the town of Bantia, in 1651, Dermot Og was killed in the last pitched battle of the Confederate war against Cromwell's armies. As he had rebelled against the English, Dermot Ogue's lands were now forfeit and passed into the hands of a wealthy financier called Sir Philip Percival, a man who Dermot Ogue had borrowed money from to finance the construction of the old court. The power of the McCarthys in Duhallo was broken forever.
the castle would remain part of the Percival estate until the early 1900s, when it was donated to the British National Trust, and then to Antashka, as it is now a designated national monument. Today, it stands as a testament to a bygone era when powerful Gaelic clans and chieftains ruled these lands.